We began our journey back at a keyboard, moving through volcano pages on the internet, finding Mount St. Helens as it was before the spring of 1980, before the eruption turned our lives upside down. I figured there would be some interesting scientific things to work on, and indeed there have been. But uh, this was a little more than I bargained for. Seismologist Steve Malone had come to the Northwest to study the chain of volcanic mountains in the Cascade Range. He didn't expect the eruptions, but in March, earthquakes rumbled under Mount St. Helens. And a week later, steam and ash explosions blackened the white face of the mountain, breaking a silence of 123 years. The data were pretty unambiguous that something unusual was going on. But what that was going to be, we, early on, we had no idea. But they knew enough to get people out of the volcano zone to cut off access to the mountain. Even Forest Service workers pulled out. We were going to be leaving anyway. <laughs> now, are you the last one? Is there anybody left? There's nobody left. No one but Harry Truman, who ran a lodge on Spirit Lake. He wouldn't go. No damn way, he said. My mind's more made up than ever. There's nothing wrong with me and my place here. There ain't a damn thing wrong with it. And I'm not leaving here. Absolutely not. In early May, St. Helens sent out another plume of ash and steam, and a bulge on the north slope kept growing, fed by magma moving up from deep inside the mountain. Geologists watching from the small towns around St. Helens knew something would happen, but they didn't know what. Well, let me see. Heads is yes, tails it's no. Okay. Um, and the mountain isn't going to blow its stop. The day before St. Helens blew up, property owners went into the volcano zone to secure their homes to bring out valuables. They never saw those cabins again. Eight thirty-two Sunday morning, 15 years ago. The eruption no one had imagined. It blew out enough ash to cover a football field 150 miles deep blackening the town of Yakima at midday. Four billion feet of timber went down, enough to build 150,000 homes. Almost a cubic mile of debris and mud crashed into the river valleys, wiping out 200 homes on 185 miles of roads and bridges. The old charts still show the earthquake seismologists believe set it all off that morning. The quake broke up that bulge and release the pressure building up below. We sort of feel it's the old proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. Finally, one more earthquake occurred, and it was become so unstable that this earthquake just set it all off. Before and after. Even 15 years later, these pictures are powerful reminders of the danger still buried in these mountains. One quiet morning, Harry Truman's Spirit Lake simply vanished. <laughs>